welcome to the Bearcats Den with President Taylor. My name is Ivy Taylor and I'm your host and president of Russ College. For today's show, we have one of our very own faculty members and leaders of the academic enterprise here at Russ College, Dr. Doris Ward. Dr. Ward is currently serving as Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Russ. She was previously the Division Chair for Math and Science. She is a graduate of Russ College and also Clark Atlanta University. Welcome, Dr. Ward. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. It is wonderful to be your guest today. I have been looking forward to this opportunity to chat with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a Rustite, a graduate of Russ College. Yes, 1985. As, as well as Atlanta University. Mm -hmm. I'd like to learn a little more about your life's journey. Can you tell us about the path to Russ College? Okay, well, I don't know exactly where to start, but I <laughs> guess I'll go back to Winona, Mississippi, okay. where I was born and reared. And I, part of the, the, I guess the story is always, two things resonated in my household. My mother always insisted, you know, that we read something. I was in a large family, she insisted that we read something. I think it was just to keep us quiet and, not, <laughs> you know, not into stuff. And my father is just, I don't care, every time you ask for two pennies or two dollars, no, 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 you have to govern your money. I'm saving this up. You have to go to college. So those were two things that I knew. Now the path, oh, the path to here is kind of, I often look at it as if, you know, it's chance. And, and, and I mm -hmm. tell students don't always be, you know, fearful of chance because you don't know, just make sure you're ready. Yeah. I graduated, uh, salutatorian from my high school. Mm -hmm. So I had a scholarship to another school down the road. Okay. I actually went there for a week. And because this was <laughs> 1981, I just told my dad, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. I don't want to play that, you know, game of sort of, you know, just I'm at a school, but I'm not really integrated and part okay. of. So at the last hour, I told them, I called one of the persons uh, at Rust that was a big person in my town. Uh, Emma Miller, she's deceased now. I called her and she said, I can get you in. And I must say, I have not at all regretted that decision. I feel that for me, it was very much um, a part making me who I am. Because Russ, I became, you know, as one say, you become into your own and yes. you gain confidence. And you know, by the time I graduated, I thought I could do anything. <laughs> and you did, and you did. And, but I tell students also, because I guess it's part of the teaching just for the importance of English. Up until the 11th grade in high school, mm -hmm. I was gonna be an English major. And I tell them, because I guess I could read and understand and comprehend because of Julius Caesar critiquing it, I actually could understand the science textbook. So okay. when I read it, I fell in love. And of course, my senior year, I'm headed to Russ College to um, major in biology. Now, unlike a lot of people that I see, I don't think I wanted really to be a physician. I, I just didn't think my personality okay. was physician. So I came with the idea that I was going to be a research scientist. You know, every student is gonna find a cure to cancer. <laughs> So I worked diligently, uh, but one of the things I, I always wanted to know stuff, you know, and I'm still that way. I just want to know. I don't know where it's going to lead to. I don't know if I'm, I know I'm not going to become wealthy from it by now, but <laughs> I just like to know. And of course, after I graduated from Russ, I, um, I went to, uh, I think I, Clark Atlanta, at the time it was Atlanta University. Mm -hmm. They offered me, uh, uh, what do we call it, fellowship. Mm -hmm. And I decided I wanted to do biochemistry. I, that was the one discipline that you found out why things mm -hmm. were. You just did not do a cursory, oh, it happens because it happens. Okay. You understand 
it teaches you to understand the science of why things happen. So that fed into your desire to know. Yeah, to know everything <laughs> because as I said, I want to know why things are. Okay. So after, the, after uh, Clark Atlanta, I wanted to do, I'm, I'm heading on my research path. So I went to uh, Winmore, Pennsylvania to do a uh, postdoc mm -hmm. in um, molecular biology. And I worked on uh, mm, microbial, you know, bacteria, the genetic manipulation of bacteria. Okay. Basically trying to look at their genes and understand how these bacteria can be modified so that they will mm -hmm. be better producers of products dealing with, you know, the milk industry because that USDA did with the milk. So now I'm finishing up my first postdoc and I'm like, oh, well, since I want to do research, I want to get some more experience. I'm going to do another one. Mm -hmm. So I was getting ready. I had been accepted to go to the Ohio State to work in plant uh, molecular biology mm -hmm. this time. I did bacteria and I was going to do plant. But one of my friends, we had been best buds in, um, you know, doing graduate school. I would go to her house for Thanksgiving. So she called me to Livingstone College. She said, you must come to this interview. And I'm like, no, I really don't want to go. I don't want to <laughs> teach. So I, but I had to go because this is my friend. Yeah. So when I left the interview, needless to say, I heard myself saying, when I go to North Carolina, not when I go to, o o, you know, Ohio. Okay, okay. So it just happened that I end, it, I won't say I ended up teaching because my mother told me long ago, that's what you'll be best at. <laughs> so I guess mothers do know best because I have not regretted that decision at all. Wonderful. Uh, I absolutely enjoy teaching, seeing students come in, uh, you know, with, and you, you know, you enhance their knowledge mm -hmm. and they really don't realize, you know, now that I'm older, they don't realize that they really bring joy to you. You're teaching yes. them, but you get a lot back from it. Just to watch them some days, they are absolutely hilarious. And so that started out at, uh, Livingstone. Now, because I knew my friend and I, you know, I had my PhD at 30 something, so she had me do everything mm -hmm. at the school. So that is, I appreciate that now, you know, because I realized back then some of the committees she put me in, she put me in charge of the, uh, doing the honors committee. I was on the faculty senate. I did a lot of things. And that really was good mm -hmm. because it sort of set the tone as I subsequently went to the other institutions. Now, uh, before we talk about the other mm -hmm. institutions, can I back up just for a moment and yes, ask you what it was like as a minority female working in sciences, in research, and then moving into academia? How were you received? You know, I noticed it, but it's something about my personality. <laughs> I, you know, it's there, but I tried not to let it get to the point it was intimidating. Mm -hmm. And I guess when you know what you know and you know you know it, you can fight, you're not really fight off. But I did notice some, um, I won't say, you know, just a little pushback from some of my colleagues, but you right. know, by the time I realized what was going yeah. on, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I realized that as a woman, they did not expect for you, heavens forbid, if you decide you were gonna get married and have a family, you were, it was frowned upon because that means, you know, I guess they were thinking your fi first priority would be your oh. husband and your child. Okay. And I won't say that it influenced me but I did realize that that was not something you should do if you want to continue okay. in that uh, arena. And sometimes, you know, and actually I must say, I noticed this now, you make a statement as a female mm -hmm. and there is some alpha male in the, in the 
place and he has to repeat what you said and tell everyone <laughs> this is what she means. For people to hear it. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So that's what I, I um, for the most part, that is what I observe. But the, more so than just teaching with a PhD is going to the different uh, conferences mm -hmm. of organizations and presenting your research. That is more so where you observe that as a African American woman. Okay. You really have to be confident and know when you say things, you know, you cannot be hesitant because it, it will, um, you know, they will jump up on it and, you know, sort of try to tear you from uh, lamb to lamb, it seems. And did you have mentors that reinforced that sense of confidence that you already had early in your career? Yes, I, you know, as you go along, I guess my personality, I don't know what other people think of it, but <laughs> I kind of, you know, you just sort of gravitate toward people and they will reach out and give you advice as to, you know, how to best handle this. And also, particularly, two of my graduate instructors were African American female. Mm -hmm. And I like to think, particularly one of them, I won't say that I'm like her, but I catch myself sometimes being that way. Her name was Dr. Irene Brown. Mm -hmm. This is the person, by the way, when I first got to graduate school, on the first exam I took for her, I made a 64. I'm like, uh, what? Not <laughs> me. But she explained, and you know, she was, she was very, um, you know, the, the work was rigorous, mm -hmm. but she explained why I had gotten a grade that I got. And I, by the time, you know, I was finishing, she was one of my favorite persons. And I must say, she served as a mentor, she and uh, Dr. Stewart. Okay, mm -hmm. well that's um, important to mm -hmm. have those mm -hmm. folks that can mm -hmm. provide encouragement along mm -hmm. the way, especially when you're in a non-traditional role. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like your early career set the platform for the heights that you have attained. I'm looking forward to learning a little more about your career before coming back to Russ. We'll continue the conversation with Dr. Doris Ward in just a few moments, but right now we'll have a break where we will enjoy a selection by the world-renowned Russ College a cappella choir under the direction of Dr. Arlandra Harvey. Give you a 
welcome back to the Bearcats Den with President Taylor. I'm Ivy Taylor, your host, and my guest today is Dr. Doris Ward, Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs at Russ College. So Dr. Ward, mm -hmm. you were sharing with us about your career trajectory and how you uh, began teaching mm -hmm. at Livingstone and discovered your love mm -hmm. for being in the classroom. Will you tell us about the other institutions where you served before landing back at Rust? I went to, after um, Livingstone, Winston-Salem State and Winston-Salem, of course, North Carolina mm -hmm. is about 40 miles north. Mm -hmm. So um, I, was I was working, you know, collaborating with um, someone at Winston-Salem State. We had a program whereby uh, actually we would take students to overseas. I went, spent two summers in Helsinki mm. and so I knew the people there and then she just said, Doris, would you be interested in, you know, coming to join us? So I worked at Winston-Salem State and I got to do a lot of exciting things there. And then after Winston-Salem State, where I was assistant professor of biology, I went to Florida. I taught at Bethune Cookman, and that was, you know, that was eye-opening. And it, I had a wonderful time down mm -hmm. on the beach. I lived on the <laughs> beach for a while, uh, and then after Bethune Cookman, I started working my way back up there. <laughs> so I went to Voorhees College, mm -hmm. and you know, I had always wanted to work at Voorhees College because it had a reputation for being, you know, a very good science and oh, mathematics okay. uh, area. So I actually wrote, sent in uh, my application. This is typical Doris. You know, I was applying for a professor of molecular biology. Mm -hmm. So the lady kept asking me questions. Do you want to be division chair and I'm like no 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 I'm applying for <laughs> <laughs> and then somewhere in that interview it, it clicked. clicked in my head like girl are you crazy <laughs> she's asking you would you be you know would you choose rather to be the division yes. chair of science you know natural well actually it was arts and sciences initially okay so you know I'm like okay and of course I said yes and I got the job and it was really uh, exciting because you know not only was I doing science and mathematics I had liberal arts you know arts and sciences mm -hmm. so it was it was just I had a lot to do but it I learned a lot particularly how to integrate you know the different areas and you had to learn where you could pool sort of resources and maybe offer suggestions of collaborations um, however, before I left there, they decided it would be, you know, most, I guess, efficient, you know, more, it would serve everybody better mm -hmm. if they split into natural okay. sciences. Okay. So, of course, I was the vision chair of, you know, natural sciences and mathematics. Yes. So, I, of course, I loved that. I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't sad that, you know, I was doing uh, what I loved. And at uh, Voorhees, there were several programs that we were able to bring there. We, I am most uh, proud of that we brought a program in emergency management, uh, mm. where you know at that time had all those hurricanes back in a row, okay. and that was much needed, you know, uh, like disaster relief right. and how to evacuate people effectively. Mm -hmm. Also, well, this is sort of kind of when I was over the arts and science. Mm -hmm. We did a program in sports management mm -hmm. and one in environmental science. Mm -hmm. And we ran a summer program for the kids, um, you know, high school students um, each year. I think about four years when I was there. So I was really proud of those things. And, um, you know, we had a, an excellent program for the students to, um, for, you know, STEM. And also, I had to teach physics, so that was quite a learning experience yeah. for me. But it was, you know, as I said, I learned a lot. So I had I stayed there about seven years, and then I I decided. Somebody asked me, Doris, would you be interested in uh, Dr. Yay? 
He said, would you consider coming to Russ College to do the division chair? I said, Dr. Yeh. We met at a scientific, you know, we were okay. getting a grant writing conference. I said, Dr. Yeh, I don't know. I said, I'll think about it. And so once again, I sort of, I think I'm going to do it. How did that feel to be invited back to your alma mater, the place where you got started? Oh, it was, when I actually got here, it was surreal because I remembered, you know, just doing things mm -hmm. on campus and, you know, it's just moments you could capture that I remember. And to top it all, Dr. Ye was still here. He taught me, Dr. Mm -hmm. um, Qureshi, mm -hmm. he taught me. I knew... Um, you know, I knew several people in the A build. So it was just a feeling of, like you know, I felt, yes. I felt at home. I felt at home. I knew I had to work hard and I wasn't going to take advantage. Oh, I'm at home. I've come to retire. But it was just a feeling inside. I felt at home and I, I knew it. So. so the division of math and science continues to be the largest division with the most students at Russ mm -hmm. College. Uh, will you talk to us about why you think that is and what are some of the challenges related to uh, teaching minorities in STEM? Uh, one of the things I would attribute it to, first of all, the job market in STEM, it's always, you know, uh, thriving. Yes. You, there's always a need for some position to be filled in the areas uh, because you know this area STEM area co covers the health uh, arena so we get a lot of students who come who wants to be doctors nurses and you know other allied health professionals physical therapy so biology is their first degree so that's one thing and then the other biggie is computer science and you know, that's in the STEM area. So our two largest departments now are biology and computer science. And I think that is what draws students primarily mm -hmm. to that area because, uh, you know, those, the career fears, fields are open. And also I like to tell people a lot of the popul the a large portion of the population that we serve, they are from rural areas. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling someone yesterday about the top 10. Mm -hmm. You know, your family will tell you, you need to get a job in an area where, you know, that is sustaining. Mm -hmm. So some of them, that's why they choose it. And that segue into the other part of your question, what are the challenges? Sometimes students have to be groomed to do these disciplines. They yes. come in and think, I want to be I'm going to major in biology because I want to be a doctor, I want to be a nurse. And they just, it does not occur to them that you're going to have to take physics, <laughs> Cal 1. And so those are the challenges trying to, you know, help them decide if this is truly the major that you want right. and are you prepared to put forth, you know, the rigor to complete it successfully. And of course, the other challenges professors cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, computer scientists, you can, for a programmer, it could, you know. Because there are easily. many other options for those folks yes, beyond yes. academia. So for them to choose to teach when you need to have a PhD mm -hmm. and those things and you can go get a job with a bachelor making more than an instructor. Right. You really have to love teaching to choose to come. And the same is true for, you know, biology, chemistry, and the other ones. You have options uh, to, you know, go out in the workforce and do very well. Well, tell us what some of your goals and plans are in your new role uh, over all of academic affairs and all the divisions. I'll tell you where it starts. Ultimately, you know, I want to have excellent programs where all the students get <laughs> jobs, go to med school. <laughs> so that's my goal. Yes. You know, everybody <laughs> does well. But to get there, what I'm thinking of right now mm -hmm. is we need to do, I feel, a program assessment. And I really want all of the faculty to assess what they do well mm -hmm. or maybe what they don't do so well. 
And you know, with this COVID, it's pulling us into another arena. Mm -hmm. So I really think that we need to look at what we are offering, how we are offering it, what our students are doing. Are we achieving our goals? And I want faculty to look at them, not the academic dean or even the division chair telling them, you need to do this. I want them to buy in it and see, this is what we need to do to achieve, you know, getting all our students where we want them to be, uh, you know, to be. So I would say first, right now what I would like is to have a real program, program assessment. assessment and have faculty do course dossiers and personal okay. uh, portfolios so they can self-reflect this is where we are where do we want to be? Exciting work. Well, based on the years that you have been here, what mm -hmm. would you say are some of the strengths that we have? Uh, prior to this show, I was just talking to Miss uh, White. Mm -hmm. She's over, you know, TV. And what she told me was, she said, these two students here are freshmen. We let them start early. Yes. We want them to see what it's about early. And that is what I think is the strength of Russ. We still need to do assessment, but faculty are dedicated to sort of embracing this student and bringing them in to see what it is about. And I tell people sometimes, if you talk to students here, they will name a faculty member more than likely that has been very instrumental in make, you know, the reason why they're here. Mm -hmm. They are in love with this person. They think the sun rises and shines. <laughs> and so, you know, even though we need to do some things better, each faculty member somewhere is doing something good for the most part. So I think that's an asset because I feel having that being the case, mm -hmm. I have something to work with because they are dedicated, they are willing and you just guide them to where we need to be. Very well said. Well, mm -hmm. Dr. Ward, I have to say, I'm so excited and thrilled to be working with you in partnership to advance and facilitate the strengthening the academic enterprise here at Russ College. Your journey is fascinating. Your energy is infectious. <laughs> so I appreciate your contributions to Rush and thank you for being on our show today. Well, thank you for having me. And if I may add, Dr. Taylor, mm -hmm. I'm going to say this. Welcome to Rest College. <laughs> uh, I personally, it seems as if it's just very exciting to work with you. I cannot, I was shocked. I told them the day you came in there, I was like, I said, my <laughs> eyes probably got big as salt. Like, so thank you. And as I said, we are excited and I'm looking forward to, you know, just an exciting time at Russ College. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone for joining us for today's show. We'll see you next time on the Bearcats Den with President.